So, Victoria Vidal, am I saying that yes. correctly? Vidal? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to, to come on the show. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to get the chance to interview you for this, this podcast uh, series that we have going on and, and learn more about your life and your artwork and uh, just just connect with you. So yeah, thank you for for taking the time. Well, thank you for reaching out and for coming to visit me here in my studio. Yeah, yeah, your studio is is. Uh, I know we were talking earlier about how you were curious of other artists' studios and how they they compare to yours. And I was mentioning how it's very similar, except this. Uh, this setup here of, of the palette and all the paint brushes is, is much bigger in your studio than others. Well, I so. have a ton of brushes because I like to have like one brush for each color. So, okay. and then, yeah, so I use a lot of hardware store brushes. So that's the bristle brushes that mm -hmm. kind of have a texture to them. So gotcha. for my technique. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of like scrubbing and uh, using the towel like yeah, you were earlier. So, yeah, so like I, abrasive type stuff. Yeah, yeah, so I paint. I put the paint on and then I kind of wipe it out and I keep going mm -hmm. back and forth, putting more paint on, kind of wiping it out, putting it on to build up the surface of the paintings. Mm -hmm. And that is actually like a great place to start really with your work okay. because it, it's something that uh, builds up uh, and, and uh, the, the process of you, um, how we were just saying, like I was just telling you how I was watching the process video of you starting with uh, the bright red or like the bright orange and then layering different colors on top of that. Right. And yeah, would you mind just sure. kind of talking so about Sure, so I start with a hot pink or yellow underpainting. So I lay out the lights and darks in pink and mm -hmm. yellow and orange. And then, and purple too sometimes to get the dark shadows. So that's the first layer. And then I go in, once that dries a little bit, then I can add the next layer of color. And depending on what the painting is, if it's green or blues, those go on next. And then I'll paint it on and then wipe it out. Mm -hmm. So you can still see a little bit of the pink or yellow, whatever the underpainting is, to show through. Right. And then it's like successive layers of paint. Mm -hmm. Painting on, wiping off. <laughs> yeah. Until like that glow starts to happen. Mm-hmm that seems like it's coming from within the painting. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very distinct quality of, of all of your works, yeah. really, that I feel when I look at it is um, this, yeah, the sense of glowing, the sense of, like, nostalgia and, and uh, memory mm -hmm. uh, when I look at your, your work. So the glow kind of draws you in, and the hot pink is a warmth so you're so it like promotes good feeling right mm -hmm. like it mm -hmm. makes you want to come into the painting and see what's around the bend mm. and just like relaxed yeah you could meditate in front of one of my paintings <laughs> definitely yeah <laughs> just stare at it until you're like in that place yeah when I look at your work, I, I feel feelings of, of calm, um, serenity, which I know aligned with a lot of the uh, description of your own work mm -hmm. on your website and stuff, serenity and um, nostalgia. And I'm just curious, are there any emotions in particular for you that you're trying to convey with your work? Yeah, so definitely a sense of well-being and calm and beauty. These are the mm -hmm. things that I've always 
since I started painting, I always wanted to put good feelings and good and beautiful images out into the world because mm-hmm. there's always so much terribleness and tragedies and you know and why add to that mm. so yeah that's exactly what i want to do is like put good vibes out into the world yeah yeah i definitely think you're doing that okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's like my number one job is to like be positive and send that out. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you describe your your art yourself, like your style? So I say that it's atmospheric landscapes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, you know, some people put it into like impressionist, but mm-hmm. I don't really subscribe to that okay because i think that was like a long time ago but i guess that's sort of a reference point for people that aren't in the art world they can like say oh i know what that means you mm-hmm. know? like the impression of a place right. because they're not they are based on real places but they're not this isn't a realistic right view of this place right So it's like, you know, memories, my memories of a place, Mm -hmm. and it can be your memory of a place. So even though this is sort of based on the Presidio Marsh, like Chrissy Field at the Bay, Mm -hmm. but it could be like a place that you went in the summer with your family or something like that, you know, or a memory that you've had. Right. So it like makes a connection, right? Correct. And connects yeah. you to nature and like, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like this, like a connection to nature, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, connection to nature, like grounding and heartfelt. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like uh, uh, that's another thing that kind of I experienced when I look at your paintings is like a connection. To, to memories and, and like an internal like uh, a, rem- a remembering how I felt at a certain point in time yeah and I could see how people could try to categorize you as an impressionism an impressionistic painter um, yeah because like you're saying like this is not a real place it's like but it's it's like a real place but on top of it, you're incorporating the mood of a person and their subjective mood that they were in, their mm-hmm. emotional state while they were in this place. Right. So it's like you're incorporating that as well. And that's what I think is makes your work uh, so unique, is it's, it's not really realism and it's not really impressionism. It's, it's kind of like... Like in between place. Mm-hmm. And I'm always like trying to kind of loosen up a little more, you know, and not not get too crisp or focused mm-hmm. on one thing or, you know, making it be the place. I don't know, it's like hard to, to talk about, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, sorry. No. no, no, it is hard to talk about. And actually, I had this conversation, you know, this is only the six, sixth episode of the podcast. And I had this conversation with the, the clay sculptor I was telling you about, Brad Burkhart. And he was like, you know, William, I don't know about this idea. A lot of artists are just focused on their work. And, you know, they, they can't always talk about, you know, what they're experiencing right. with words. So, um, but uh, but no, I think your I mean your website and your statement and your bio did a pretty good yeah, job of, yeah. of hitting it on the head. I mean, I I had those thoughts about your work even before seeing reading that, and then I read it. I'm like, oh cool, like same page mm-hmm. and everything. Um, yeah, uh, I I'm looking at some questions here. Some of them I I really want to go into like your your background bio by like okay. biography. Mm-hmm. Um, before we go back to your work, um, I know you grew up in Houston and uh, you've traveled a lot in your life. Starting with Houston kind of as your, your childhood, did you live 
pretty much throughout from like when you were born to high school? Yes. So Houston um, and Clear Lake, which is where NASA is. Okay. So that was like sixth grade till moving away to college Mm. was in Clear Lake. And then, um, yeah, so all the time in Houston. But you know, if you know Houston, it's like huge. Mm, it's the biggest city. It's right? like so sprawling, yeah. Yeah. How did growing up in Houston um, affect you? Because that's one thing that's kind of outside of everyone's control, like where we're born. Right. And it shapes who, who we become. So how do you think that's in- so affected So I think because I grew up in a... F- big family so I have four brothers four older brothers and I was the only girl and I was also adopted Mm -hmm. as a baby so I was kind of separate in a way from everyone I mean I was part of the family but I felt like I was able to just do whatever I wanted to in a way okay or I just decided to do you just decided yeah you just decided yeah I'm gonna do whatever and you know um, I when I went away to college, that's sort of when I started thinking about art as a profession. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had always drawn or made things out of clay or painting or sewing. I made my clothes in high school and I liked crochet. So I was always doing stuff with my hands, Mm -hmm. but I never knew what an artist is, you know, Mm -hmm. or what that means or what they do or how you live a life as an artist. Mm -hmm. Um, So it wasn't until I got to college and I saw the professors and other teachers living as artists and what they did. And then kind of, I don't know if they were very encouraging, but maybe I will give them that maybe they were encouraging, you know. Uh But then, um, I mean, my family, they were like, what? What are you doing? Yeah. So they weren't particularly encouraging, but I just did, you know, I just made my path. Mm Mm-hmm. And once I moved back to Houston after graduating from college, Mm. then I started working for, um, I was a studio assistant to a couple of artists and also working in a, like an art center. So I had, so I was also seeing that there's professional people and they're making it happen and they're working. And I was really lucky that I had worked for two, like, Famous for Houston artists. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this is still when you're at Corpus Christi. No, this University. is when I came back to Houston. Oh, back in Houston, yeah. and then you're you're kind of exploring and, and working for yeah. artist professionals. Yeah. Okay. And then one of the artists that I worked for, when I was telling her, I really want to go to New York and I want to do this and that, and she was like, "Well, go, just yeah. go." go to graduate school that's the easiest way to get there and then you can figure it out from there Mm -hmm. so that's what I did I went to graduate school and then I figured out that wasn't for me right and I definitely want to talk about your experience at NYU and and being in New York working at the galleries Um, before we do that though I'm just curious a little bit more about your um, childhood did you did you draw a lot as a child do you remember the drawings you made I what do you were doing? like I did a lot of drawings so I would make these like fantastical worlds like fantasy yeah type stuff. and yeah. like castles and forests and animals I like drawing animals a mm-hmm. lot um, so I do remember those drawings and I took a lot of ceramics at like the JCC so I made a lot of animals and bowls and stuff like that yeah yeah so you're kind of experimenting creatively as a young person was anyone in your family an artist no exposure to or my mom was the crafts person so she Mm, sewed a lot and she did needlepoint and she had this oil painting 
box mm-hmm. that I took over. And so I used the paints, but no real training for that. And I'm not right. even sure if she actually ever painted with that or if she okay. just had it. I don't even know, <laughs> but I yeah. I took it and took over with it. So Okay. Yeah, yeah. The arts and crafts is interesting. I feel like that's an entry point for a lot of people yeah. into real like not real. I mean it's all artistic expression, but like more serious artistic mediums like painting and sculpture. Um kind of have a start so my mom was like super serious about sewing and Mm -hmm. she was she was the amazing seamstress okay but i it was i didn't have the patience for it but i did get the training but i like to be so perfect i just couldn't do it Mm -hmm. did you prick your finger a bunch yeah yeah yeah. my mom tried to teach me to sew and i couldn't do it because of that i kept stabbing myself (laughs) I mean, it's a great <laughs> skill, and I'm happy that I she taught me. It, but mm-hmm. yeah, I couldn't go to the next level with it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Who inspired you growing up? Was there anyone who, in particular, was was a role model? It could be in your own life or just in the like the greater culture. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I. I don't, I'm not sure who really inspired me, but I do know there were people that I didn't want to be like, so I tried mm. to make sure that I grew in a different way. Okay, <laughs> you know? reverse inspiration, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> like, and uh, that's like been the driving force of my life to not be that way, so... Uh, yeah, you know. anti-role models. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But although, so the one woman that I worked for after college, the Mm -hmm. artist, her name is Dixie Friend Gay, and Mm -hmm. she was like the person that I wanted to be like Mm -hmm. in her professional life and just the way she, she was a mom, but she also like put her art first Mm -hmm. and was very successful, still is Mm -hmm. really successful, and was very um, encouraging to me. I Mm -hmm. mean, I was a little bit scared of her, but, you know, she really pushed me in the right direction. This was a painter in New York? No, in Houston. Oh, in Houston? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So this was still very, like, early days of your process. Okay. Nice. What about her... uh, inspired you like just the role her her like the potential that you saw for yourself to kind of be like yeah. her and you liked her lifestyle and yeah. stuff yeah okay. and she she was like living the life of a full time artist mm. and making opportunities for herself and making beautiful paintings and just being famous in Houston oh know? really yeah. okay I'll yeah. have to check her work out is she yeah. still making oh, work yeah, today oh yeah 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 she does a lot of public projects now so she's doing these like huge mosaics and big sculptures and just oh, wow. like really blossomed and branched out and is like national international now oh really cool so she started painting and then worked her way into yeah, other mediums yeah okay wow yeah, yeah. that's really and awesome. that was one of her things was like you know you never know how long your relationships with galleries are going to last, so you need to like always be looking forward to the next things and mm. how to grow your practice. Mm. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you about galleries, definitely. Because um, I feel like you, having worked in a gallery, um, and also like your just your experience with being represented in mm-hmm. galleries now, I feel like you have a lot of insight on that. Um, before we do though, there's there was a a a quote, or uh, it's a quote that I'm pulling from your website of something you said. Uh, you said, "My paintings are like memories, relaying not what is seen but felt." Um, and I know we kind of touched on that mm-hmm. a bit earlier with with kind of incorporating the mood of a place on top of uh, the actual landscape. But I just wanted to kind of. Um, say that to to give you the opportunity to say anything more on that before we move forward 
So wherever I go, I take a ton of photos and I like, I'll just be driving and I'll see something that like catches my eye. And so I capture it quickly and then try to recreate that feeling that I had or what was it about that that drew me to it that I wanted to see in a painting. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the memory. Mm -hmm. So the photo is like the starting point of that. Right. And then thinking back at, at that, like what it was that kind of grabbed me. Mm -hmm. And then trying to make that same feeling in the painting. Right, yeah. And you've traveled um, a lot throughout your career. Has there been a difference in Obviously, there has been. I'm curious what the difference has been um, across different countries for, for that experience for you of, of going out and either taking photos or I know you, you said that you do studies sometimes of, of landscapes mm -hmm. and then use that later for reference material. How is the landscape changing across different countries affected that? So the way so i do a lot of artist residencies and mm -hmm. that's like the way that i can travel and paint mm -hmm. and then so by doing a residency let's say my first my first international residency was in india mm -hmm. so i was able to go there and spend a month traveling around exploring and painting at the same time so you know i was based in, um, yeah, I don't remember the name now, but in Kerala. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I could go out and I could explore and then come back and paint. So like right. really take the light and the colors that I'm seeing and then translate them immediately in a way, yeah. you know. So I've made that be part of my painting practice is to go to international residencies mm -hmm. and be inspired by the landscape there and then yeah. kind of really thinking about like what do I want to see so like in Iceland mm -hmm. I wanted to see the change in the seasons there and then also I was hoping for northern lights but I didn't get it mm -hmm. um, but that was a particular landscape and I had read a lot that it was like a moonscape and you know desolate but that I didn't see that I saw something different when I was there so that was kind of interesting yeah and then um, I went to, well, the Finland residency. I was there in March 2020, mm -hmm. right? Oh, wow, not too long, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it was like the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. And the world was shutting down, so I had to scramble to leave. Yeah. So I only got the eight days worth of painting, like, icy river. And they, it was, like, amazing. Yeah. Beautiful, long shadows across the frozen river, which I've never seen. Mm -hmm. And they have horse races on the river. In Finland? On the frozen river. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I just saw that they just had it again. Mm -hmm. So I saw on their Instagram. And I was like, oh, that was such a, ma it was so magical in a way because yeah. I'm, from being from Houston, where it snows maybe every 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, never seeing a frozen river that you could walk on. Yeah. So that was exciting. Yeah. No, that definitely sounds like a foreign experience, like yeah. something for us being from the U.S. <laughs> like we never, no. we don't, I don't think we ever see uh, horses on frozen <laughs> right. rivers. Recently. And they uh, they were parking their cars on the river. It was just like wild. I'm like, yeah. This is so crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, residences, residencies are, are an interesting thing, and it seems like you're the first artist who's really incorporated that as a very important aspect mm -hmm. of your artistic process. I saw you've been doing uh, artistic residencies for as long as you've been painting, yeah, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, 
Are all residencies the same, or how do, how's no, it different? No, they're different. Yeah. Um, so what I look for is what's the landscape around the residency mm. going to be like? Of course, yeah. So that's where I get my inspiration, and mm. I want to be somewhere where it's in nature, and I'm. it doesn't matter if there's like a lot of artists there at the same time, or it's not really a networking thing. For me, okay, it's more of a work, a inspiration, and then work. And usually, depending on the residency and the work that I created, I can like be inspired from that for like years. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. a residency up in Healdsburg at Chalk Hill mm -hmm. that I've gone to twice, and that like I can just go back to those photos and the paintings that I made for years and just keep reworking the paintings and exploring different ways of making it mm -hmm. and the different light. And yeah, so it's just like, you never run out of, there's like no artist block because there's always something different to look at. So my next residency is next month in Newfoundland. In Newfoundland. That's in Canada? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That was the Cove something? Yeah, Cove? Pouch Cove. Pouch Cove. So I've been wanting to go to this place since 2000. Oh, really? Maybe even like 1998. I'm not sure. I don't mm -hmm. remember. So I applied to a couple of times, like, way back then mm -hmm. and then they went from taking submissions to just inviting artists to come mm. so I finally got an invitation oh wow <laughs> yeah, like exciting 20, congratulations 20 something years later yeah yeah, Hope, yeah maybe they ar archived you <laughs> right. and had your contact <laughs> so that's exciting really excited what about uh, Pouch, Co Pouch, Pouch Cove in particular was uh, something that you wanted to go to so I think the dramatic weather that passes over the island mm -hmm. is something that I'm really interested in and then the because it is an island the sea so I think it'll be like amazing light and then just the drama of it mm -hmm. so and then I don't I don't know much about Newfoundland but I know that there's like very windy and the it's very windy and yeah. like the houses have to be chained down and the yeah. trees grow at an angle and stuff like that. So I think it'll be exciting. That's the province right above New York, right? Yeah. Canadian? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting place. Um, I've explored it on Google Maps a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the residencies thing is so cool because, um, yeah, I feel like different artists go to it for different reasons. Oh, yeah. Some for like a social connection with mm -hmm, other artists, mm -hmm. others like you just to like take advantage of the landscapes yeah. that are right there. Um, uh, an artist residency in a place as far away as like India, or I believe you, you did one in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, any differences between those? Because now we're talking like a different culture entirely. Yeah. So I would, I always recommend when people ask me about it to find artists that have been there and ask them like how their experience was, mm -hmm. if they wish they had brought something that they didn't bring, you know, mm -hmm. like what was the setup like? So. Yeah that you're not just like traveling across the globe and then you don't know what you're getting into. Right, yeah. So the like Japan, because I'd lived there before, mm -hmm. so I kind of knew what to expect. And I really, because I'd lived in Tokyo and the, you know, there's no horizon in Tokyo. It's all built up, it's all cement. Even like, I don't know, you've been to Japan out everything is like cement okay you know um, but I had been reading a lot of Japanese novels and I was like 
they always talk about this beauty and I'm like where is that natural beauty mm. so it was in Kamiyama where I went to this residency it was in the mountains trees um, just beautiful peaceful mm -hmm. countryside so people in the village had a lot of rice farmers so there were like tiered rice patties and okay yeah it was just green lush it was beautiful mm. And you have paintings, which are a collection just from that residency. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So, you, going back to your kind of your, your biography, uh, you were really inspired by this one artist in particular. <clears throat> Can you say her name again? The, Dixie really? Friend Gay. Dixie Friend Gay. And she's yeah. a Houston yes. artist, now internationally renowned for her art and right. stuff. Uh, and she told you, you should just go to New York. Yeah. Okay. So you go to New York. Yeah. And did you apply before? I did. So okay. she had gone to NYU for graduate school. Oh, okay. So, she so said, that's why she you know, was, okay. You go, mm -hmm. go and yeah. just see what happens. So that's what I did. So you arrive in New York yeah. and you start attending classes. And that must have been in itself just going to New York for the first time a big change outside Huge of painting. Change, yeah. 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 What and was I didn't that really like? like give myself enough credit for making that That's a, huge leap, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So I ended up living at International House, which is up by Columbia. Okay. So if you know New York, Columbia's up here, NYU's down here. So it was like a long commute. Didn't really make sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I really wanted to live at International House and meet people from all over the world. And okay. most of the people that lived there went to Columbia. Mm -hmm. So I was probably the only NYU student there. Mm -hmm. And that was like a challenge. I mean, it wasn't really, but it was good, I guess, to get used to like subways and everything. Yeah. But once I was at NYU, it wasn't exactly what I had hoped for I'm not sure what I was looking for mm -hmm. but um, like they didn't have studio space for pe the students so like I was painting in hallways and stuff and it was just like very expensive for that mm -hmm. so I decided that it wasn't the right fit for right. me so I started working in a gallery and that was that was one year into a three year was a three year program that they do there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Was there any uh, besides the networking? Do you feel like there were any exercises or techniques or teachers there that that kind of added? Or um, and you can be totally you know, honest. Like, like all of the teachers there were all professional artists that were in the art world of New York and mm -hmm. you know being shown in galleries. So. I didn't really get that at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't understand that, you know? The importance of yeah, connecting with yeah, them. And, yeah. yeah. So, but, I, you know, who knows if I would have, like, no, you know, worked those connections anyways. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just, I, I think at that time I wasn't, I wasn't confident enough to mm. do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's difficult to to even I mean just like do the whole networking thing. I think some people are inclined towards it and mm -hmm. other people aren't. And in my experience I had a similar experience uh at USC where I was in a business school and it was like people were saying, Oh, this is so great you're here, you need to network with people, this is important and like I was clumsy with all of that. Like I was at like clubs and stuff and I was like all right, time to do the networking thing. And I was like, I didn't know what <laughs> and it's what like, people were actually talking yeah, about. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's not. It was you weren't. It wasn't a natural thing. You know. It was right. like instead of thinking of it as building relationships or you know just making friends with people. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like it's like you have to do this networking, which is terrible. Mm. So, um, so after a year then of, of that, you, you were telling me earlier that a teacher kind of had, uh, 
offered this position and you were able to to get it at working at galleries in New York. Yeah. So yeah. so it turned out that the woman that was telling me about the job mm-hmm. was she was an artist and she was her husband just started working as the director of this gallery that was created by seven galleries from Denmark mm-hmm. opened this gallery in New York. So it was called Danish Contemporary Art mm-hmm. because they wanted to have some kind of presence for their Danish artists in New York. Okay. So so um, maybe I was the only person that <laughs> interviewed, I don't know, but I got the job immediately mm-hmm. and then worked with him for seven years. Oh, wow. So the gallery started out in Soho, mm-hmm. and it was in the same building as um, Sana Bend and Castelli. It was like a very famous building, and we were on the ground floor in a beautiful mm-hmm. space. Yeah, yeah. And were you painting during this time as I you did. were working? I yeah. was. So yeah. I had a little studio on 14th Street in the meatpacking district, like way west. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the thing. You just have to go, you have to paint, you Mm -hmm. have to show up in your studio, you have to, or, you know, wherever your work is, even if it's at home, you know, you have to show up. Even Mm -hmm. when I was living at this tiny room at International House, I had a little studio set up there. So Mm -hmm. I was working on pastel Mm -hmm. and then, you know, I was creating all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing. You just have to show up for your yeah. work. You don't strike me as someone who has a uh, an issue with resistance to work. Is that no, true? No, that's true. Yeah. 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 Because some artists uh, face you know resistance with you know emotional not wanting avoiding work in right. in some ways and it being hard to get started. Um, but so, it seems like yeah. yeah. So I think. Um, when I was at NYU, I because I guess I was having issues with like transitioning from Houston to New York, and so yeah. I started talking to, I don't know, I guess he was my advisor. I'm not really sure now anymore what that, anyways, I've met him in his office like once a week, and we would talk, and he was just like, you know, just make the work, mm-hmm. just do it, and then you can figure it out after just make a bunch of work and then see what you get yeah. and then you know then you can talk about it or write about it or whatever but just do mm-hmm. it and then see what happens yeah. so I've always like okay and that's been the driving that was enough yes, for you yeah. and then you've just been riding off of that that's pretty <laughs> yeah. good I know it's like I mean if it works it works if it doesn't so what you can paint Mm. over it you can throw it away it doesn't you know it keep it just keeps moving you forward when you were in the galleries and working on on the side uh and you know those were kind of like the early years of your Mm -hmm. artistic journey uh were you also doing nature landscapes has it been the same kind of content throughout or yeah so starting so even when I was in Houston and I was working I had a little studio there before I moved to New York okay um I was working in pastel but I it was like not really realistic landscapes but sort of more tighter than what these are so and I was my inspiration was a garden there that has beautiful azaleas Mm. so I did a huge series of azalea garden paintings Mm -hmm. or like pastels and that's kind of kind of propelled me on and then um, some a couple that ran this group called looking at art they would do studio tours and bring people to studios and they put me on the tour and that's kind of like gave me the confidence to keep going and okay and they I made sales and you know it was like oh that must have been really exciting boost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah sales yeah. in your first few years of yeah. making art yeah. nice I mean I think everything was like 
a hundred bucks or 200 bucks. I mean, so, even know. today, that's a good amount yeah. for, for a beginner artist. Yeah. You okay. must have redone the azaleas because I think I saw a collection I did. of azaleas. So yeah. I was supposed to have a solo show in Houston. So I thought, oh, it would be really cool for me to like revisit the azaleas because mm-hmm. that's sort of how I got my start. Yeah. And so I made a series of them and then the show fell through. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, I still have them. Yeah. I've sold a couple, but they're still around. That's cool, though, to, to kind of go full circle yeah. like that. I think now actually would be kind of a cool um, place to kind of take like an intermission, if you will, or like okay. not an intermission, but um, just playing with this new idea of doing like a Instagram exploration where pretty much uh, I'm just going to hand you the iPad here. And if there are any like... Instagram artists, friends, or otherwise that you just think are like underrated or you draw inspiration from personally that you want to talk about? Jenny, Jenny. Yeah, Jenny Wontuck. Wontuck. So she's a friend of mine. Okay. And she makes beautiful landscapes. And I love her color scents and all of just, and she's like, getting more abstract with her landscapes and not using reference photos like because we've been doing this so long there's certain images that I could probably make a painting of you know this without even looking at it just could be from my memory or my imagination I just love her her landscapes I love the colors. Mm. They're just gorgeous. And now she's starting to, she also does city scenes, which I don't do. So I'm impressed by that and her figurative. And now she's starting to do some uh, ceramics. So she's going to paint her like landscapes on platters and stuff. Oh, wow. So that's cool. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they're really beautiful. Mixing up the media a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I like her work. I, don't, I mean, I, I'm on Instagram, but I'm more like... Just, I don't know, that's terrible to say. Like, I'm just there to like... Going on the explore page and put my work, you know, I'm making sure my work is on. Oh no, I mean that's instead of like I it's it's kinda tricky because it's a time it sort of a time suck, right? Mm. And then you also get the FOMO, the fear of missing out on things, or if you're not part of something or Mm-hmm. Why wasn't I invited to that show or, yeah. you know, yeah. something like that. Or like, I don't know, it's um, trying to see it as everyone's promoting themselves. So mm-hmm. it's not all real. In right. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's check out your Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so what are you up to nowadays in terms of your most recent works? Are these the top ones, most recent ones that you've created? These Mm -hmm. here. Um, So this is like a picture of my studio. There was really beautiful light coming in, but it's like bad for the paintings. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, I better like take care of that. Um, Yeah, so these are new. And these are in a show right now mm. for 48 pillars and they're the long skinny paintings mm-hmm. so like those the blue ones right so you're they the curator invites artists to be in this show mm. and I always like to have a choice I feel like too restricted to only do one painting so I made this and then I made those and then I was able to choose which ones 
Beautiful. would go in the show. Nice. And then there were some issues with drawing. So it was kind of a very, a very challenging project that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> was it like a commission? Like the curator had reached out to you for a specific piece? Or you had some stuff? No. The- so it, everybody in the show makes uses the same panels oh, to okay. create their work. So everyone has like long, skinny paintings or whatever they made. It's a diptych, correct? Yeah. Like two on this? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So that's... Oh, and this is... That's how my paintings start. Mm. The pinks and the purple. The darks are purple. Oh, interesting. I thought it was just all a uniform color but you actually kind of do a little bit of the landscape itself yeah so it's like sketching it out and then getting the lights and shadows in and Mm -hmm. then building from there so this painting is that painting this one here yeah oh wow i mean it's like there's some issues with that that i need to fix but and maybe i don't want it to be so green i feel like it's too green kind of lost mm. some of the drama. I really like the sky though. Yeah, the, the sky. sky. The pink and the blue together. Yeah. So probably I'll kind of go back to this a little bit and then mm-hmm. add the pinks back in and then kind of go back with whatever. Green, some greens, but not as, mi- not as green as it is right now. Mm-hmm. So this painting is from Iceland. Mm. So I actually... It has that desolate feel to it. Yeah. Sorry. So when I was in Iceland, this is the painting that I made. So I did a lot of work on paper. Mm-hmm. So this was the like sketch, I guess. And mm-hmm. Once I was back in San Francisco, I made a lot of larger paintings right on canvas so using the little paintings that I made and with your your uh, approach which is I know I already said this but not on camera which is a very unique way of Mm -hmm. of going about it where you cover the entire canvas with this light Um, correct me if I'm wrong but it's kind of to make it easy for to, to achieve that glow effect. Yeah, and, so and, yeah. you'll see a little bit of the pink like shimmering underneath. So it adds some warmth and then it adds like a little magic, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, a little flickering light. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and, and there being a, it seems like in all of your works, there is like a one source of light that mm-hmm. everything kind of glows out of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Was there any other um, pieces that you wanted to kind of highlight in this, or? No. I like this. um, So this sort of from Chrissy Field, the marsh. There was Mm -hmm. an amazing pink sunset and it was like the whole bay, everything was pink. So I've gotten a lot of paintings from that one evening. Mm, you know? mm-hmm. And just like keep reimagining it and thinking from different angles of it, mm-hmm. but keeping that sort of pink glow. Yeah. Yeah. So I keep do uh, like keep reworking scenes until I'm like tired of tired of it. The actual landscape. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. But some, you know, you can just get like a lot of ideas from. So. Okay. Now we're moving more into um, kind of fun general general questions okay. about about <laughs> art. Um, well, I guess. Uh, yeah, what is what is the purpose of art uh, t- 
to you? Like, what does that mean for the purpose of art? Why does art exist? Well, I think of it, I mean, there's several ways to think of it as, you know, sending a message. So there's different, uh, different artists making work for different reasons. And mm -hmm. my reason is to add beauty and mm -hmm. to recognize beauty and to like show you the beauty and to make you think to look out your window or take a walk right. or connect with nature somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's yeah, that's definitely one of the, the main reasons is just just to create more beauty and kind of help people see the beauty mm -hmm. that is kind of all around us. Yeah, just like take a minute. Yeah. To look. To really look. Mm -hmm. No phone. <laughs> You're right, exactly. <laughs> like I always say, yeah, just look, look with your eyes, you know, if yeah. you're looking for something. Um, on a similar note to like a big question about uh, art, like how would you define art? And I've been prefacing, or not prefacing, but adding to this, like, you know, within this context of this period now where there's like nfts and ai art like the dolly coming out that's able to generate images yeah what? so i mean i was thinking about that and thinking like as i get older and my hands maybe won't work as well so would it be so bad to like put the prompts in and have a image made i mean i I'm assuming by that time I'm doesn't matter. Like I don't I'm not going to be making work anymore. Hmm. But but I still like to work with my hands. But what if I can't yeah. work with my hands? Right. But I still want to like put something out or, you know, create. Yeah. So or what like I have some retina issues. What if I don't have sight anymore? Mm -hmm. You know? I don't know, like, is it so terrible to have something that could, if it's still coming from you? Mm hmm So Dolly, definitely, yes. I don't know. I'm not going to say yes. I'm not no. going to say yes, because I On still have, like, but this is, like, if I don't have my hands anymore. You yeah. Know? But I don't like that it can, you know, what if it takes, images from artists without their permission and makes right. work that way yeah. that I'm not on board with mm -hmm. and I think artists should be paid for their work mm -hmm. so yeah because I was playing with it with my brother and it's like you can put in you know uh, beach beach scene and then you can like add specific things like with volleyball and like little boy playing in the sand and then you can say and paint it like Dali, yeah, and it will look yes, like Dali. Yeah, and it's like, okay, yeah. that's a little troubling because it's, right. you know, looking at, it's just taking all of Dali's <laughs> yeah. works. Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I still think no matter what, there's still going to be a need or a desire for like the handmade and the, mm -hmm. and the craft from a person. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree 100%. And I understand where you're coming from with, yeah, like, like as someone who's an artist who has that creative desire, there are concerns for things like, uh, you know, a sight and, and hearing, like I have tinnitus. And it's like sometimes if you're like, oh, I'd never be able to listen to music again if I go deaf one day, you right, know, okay. it's like there's fears like that that are um, real. But um, yeah, if, if you could return to your 25-year-old self, and give them um, any type of advice for becoming a better artist faster, you know, besides maybe skip the NYU thing. <laughs> right. um, but like in terms of like technique, I guess, uh, are there any practical things that come to mind for you? I mean, I just, you just have to show up every day. You have to make yeah. that time and make something every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It doesn't have to be 
anything. You just have to do it. You have to go in. You have to, wherever your space is, you have to make something every day. Whether mm-hmm. it's like sketching or drawing or set something up and do like a still life or paint a landscape or you know mm-hmm. something. And it has to be consistent and you have to do it because otherwise you don't grow. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like the 10,000 hour thing. You have to right. put the time in. I'm curious because more times than not, I'm meeting people who have issues with avoidance and resistance and fear and and like you were saying we were saying earlier like you're not one of those people is that because of you think just not naturally you're that way or do you have like um i don't want to say rules but just like systems in place where you're like i just follow this and that yeah i mean i think definitely there's no resistance in getting into the studio and working Mm. and doing some promotion for my art business. But there is resistance sometimes of um, doing all of like the business that has to be done Mm. part. Mm -hmm. And like sometimes I still am shy to say that I'm an artist. (laughs) Mm. Really? After multiple decades? I know. I know. I know. I know. I don't know. It's just weird. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I just, well, part of it, I think, is because I did work in the gallery. So I know, like, the guy that I worked with, the director of the gallery, he would, like, not make fun of artists, but, you know, it was like, oh, these artists, they come in, they want to show here. And it's like, we only show Danish artists. So. Mm hmm. So I have that kind of in the back of my mind as like not to bother people, you know, and okay. not to promote myself in a way to yeah. in that. I don't know. It's so crazy. Mm. <laughs> so it's it's Wednesday morning, let's say, and it's like 9 a.m. And you come in here and you're doing you're doing uh uh, what, what you're you're saying? You're just doing the work, right? And yeah. and you're so advanced now with your craft. Maybe we could like roll back the time a bit to like earlier days, maybe like kind of the middle or like even a little bit earlier. When you say just make art, like, um, is it pure play, like just experimentation? No, or like, no. I'm, I'm trying to th- yeah. I'm, I'm trying to visualize it in my head. Right. So it's it's more like. Um, making a project so for me it would be like okay I want to make 10 paintings for a series of this idea or place and then I also one I look think of place and then I also think of the color palettes like what do I Mm -hmm. what colors do I want to work on today or how do I like push my color in a different direction or like at one point I was making jewel tone landscapes that were like not you know they were just such they bright colors you know not natural so and now I'm sort of doing these like these greens that are more in kind of natural but right soft focus so setting so you you really set projects for yourself yeah. and kind of like criteria within those projects of like I'm gonna do 10 10 different variations of this landscape shot yeah. with different color gradients yeah and then also if I get stuck on something I'll just start something new like I'll start a new painting so that's why I have like all these things <laughs> going at once yeah because you know, you don't have to like get stuck on something. And I mm-hmm. think that's what kind of makes people scared to go in the studio. They don't know like what's next in the painting. So then they avoid it. Mm. So my theory is just start at something new. Are you a very visual person? Do you pre-visualize 
the entire work or are you just starting and kind of work out as you um, go? I do have sort of an idea of what I want, but I don't, I don't make that like the fixed goal because you never know how it's going to change and something exciting might happen, mm, like color right, wise yeah. or something, you know, so I yeah, don't want to yeah. like stop any of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, okay, cool. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think that will help a lot of artists. Great. Um, it's great advice. Uh, more, more fun questions now. If you could have lunch with one artist, dead or alive, who would it be? So it would be Wolf Kahn, and he recently died. And he, I, met, I met him once, like briefly. He was very old in his gallery. Mm-hmm. And, but I've always loved his landscape paintings and his color use of mm. color is just amazing. And I know he was a great teacher and very giving of his knowledge. Mm. So I would love to like have him over for a studio visit yeah. <laughs> and see what he thinks about my work or what could I do to improve or go push it a little more forward. Mm. Wolf Kahn, he was a he was a painter and a painting teacher in, in yeah. California. No, in in the East Coast, New York, okay. Vermont. So he was big. Um, I think he started the Vermont Studio Center, and that's okay. a residency in Johnson, Vermont. Oh, gotcha. That, that was that the one that you attended? Yeah. So I've been there twice. Okay. Yeah, it's really a special place. Oh, Vermont's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Um. If you could travel back to any time period of, of art, um, what period would you want to go so to? So I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, I don't think I would want to. Like, as a woman, there's no opportunities for you. So, Fair enough. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't know. That might not, that might not be good, as, mm-hmm. unless I could go back as a different person, or, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, are there any movements, I guess, to kind of repackage that question, any movements that you especially admire? I mean, I would love to have been part of like the abstract expressionist and reading. I mean, not really, because the women and that didn't get a fair shake, mm-hmm. but reading the book Ninth Street Women. I mean, it was like a super exciting time and then mm-hmm. exciting time to be in New York and sort of on the beginning of the New York art scene. Right. Yeah. And just like being like uh, Joan Mitchell, like just a one, you know, like your whole body is in the painting and it's like huge paintings. Yeah. 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 That would be cool. That's that's uh, a coincidence. You're you're mentioning Joan Mitchell because that's actually the artist, or the artist, yeah, that uh, Ronnie Gennati wanted to have lunch with. Yeah, for I the mean, very she's reason. She's like a tough cookie, so I don't know if I would want. <laughs> I don't know if I would really want to meet her in person, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, but to paint like her or to be somehow in her orbit, I guess. Mm. Hmm. Last question on on travel. I know we've talked so much about travel, but it's because it's a big part of your art yeah. process, really. Um, uh, is there something within foreign culture that you've experienced that you think the U.S. could benefit from adopting? Um, I guess, like, Um, I don't know, from being in, there's something about the capitalism of the United States that isn't in different countries, you know, where it, mm-hmm. like our work 24-7, you know, mentality. Yeah. To always be working and, you know, 
all striving. I mean, I guess it, the rat race. Yeah, the rat race. Type. Yeah, which is like New York. Yes, <laughs> that's like the pinnacle <laughs> yes. in the U.S. <laughs> I mean, I think you know. I I always tell younger people it's great to live in New York when you're young and mm-hmm. just have that experience. You don't mm-hmm. have to stay there, or you you know you can, or you don't have to. Mm-hmm. But just to like live it for a period of time, mm-hmm. I think is really important. Um, well, now I'm really curious. That YSF then, because you settled here in like 2000 ish. Yeah. Uh, so just slower paced. Yeah, and also, I mean, my work really took off once I moved here, mm. and. I mean, I guess it's uh, kind of a mixture of maybe my self-confidence and having had two years in Japan where I couldn't do anything but paint and travel around. Mm -hmm. Not that I wanted to do anything other than that, but, you know, like I didn't have to have a job outside of my painting, so I could just really focus on that. And once I did that, I was like, there's no turning back. Mm -hmm. So how can I be a professional artist with a full-time studio practice. And I was able to do that here. And, you know, people like my work here. So Mm -hmm. I found that to be easier than New York. And, like, the artists here are more open to be friendly Mm. and sharing. Mm -hmm. Because there's, like, there's enough for everyone, you know. And there's a lot of different art and a lot of different ways to get it out in the world and people mm. to appreciate it. So New York is a little it's tough. Mm. What's something, what, what's something like an uncommon experience which was so positive for you that it makes you sad that most people will not experience it? I guess on one, in one way, like the amount of travel or just figuring out how to do the international travel. Mm. Um, and like when I was in Iceland, I hiked up a glacier, which was really scary for me because I'm afraid of heights, but mm. I pushed myself and I did it. So mm. that. And then um, a couple of years ago with my family, we went on a safari, and that was really exciting and sad in a way. And for the animal, I don't know, just like the whole environment. So, mm-hmm. but uh, that travel, yeah, travel. just being able yeah. to experience yeah. different cultures and yeah. yeah, and there's so many people that are that just don't travel, you know, that don't even think about, I'm just thinking of like Texans or like, (laughs) why would you want to leave Texas? We have everything here. Yeah. Sort of mentality. Yeah. Not all Texans I know. No, of course not. Generalizing. Yeah. What's something that every artist should try at least once? Besides, I guess, travel, because that's, yeah, Yeah. that's a good one. Goes without Um, saying. I don't know, like what, what do you? One, one answer that, um, that Ronnie gave, uh, was to actually to travel, (laughs) (laughs) um, but was to, uh, try messing up a painting intentionally. And, and that was for him therapeutic for facing some resistance he had with creating mm-hmm. pretty paintings right. like things that right. are nice but they're almost too perfect and he had resistance towards that so he said something every artist should try at least once is you know have a nice painting and if when you get that feeling of like oh i just i can't even touch it because i don't want to me- mess it up just take some orange paint and just like yeah. squirt it on the canvas um to kind of push yeah. yourself through that um, so it could be like as specific as that, like just a technique or a situation. 
Well, I think artists should like throw away old work or whatever mm. they don't want to be part of their legacy, like to get rid of that, mm. to s- cut it up. Interesting. Or cut it up and make different art out of it. Like, you know, you could cut it into slats and weave it back together as something different or, you know, but just don't have old works hanging around that Mm. aren't going to serve you. I mean, there are works, old work that you can look at and learn from and grow from, or, you know, that, you know, it shows like, a period of your work mm-hmm. don't get rid of that stuff but just the stuff that's like not that you don't want someone to find <laughs> yeah. oh that's victoria Beatles work <laughs> yeah. okay yeah uh yeah oh that's a really great answer i wouldn't have thought of that but yeah that makes a lot of sense so you do you practice that yourself i just started doing that going through and like just cutting it up and tearing it off the stretcher mm. and throwing it away. Wow. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should have saved it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, why? <laughs> just get rid of it. And it kind of frees up the space and like gets rid of old ghosts. Right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I could see how that like, could be therapeutic. It's like me with random items in my house. Just want to get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, what do you have? Do you have an uncommon tool that you use every day, um, in terms of your your art making process, uh, that would be hard for you to live without? Um, not really. I mean, I use all of those hardware store brushes. I prefer those to like the nice artist brushes. Mm, mm-hmm. Why? Why is that? I like the um, the bristly way and like scrubbing with them and you don't have to be too precious with it right because i can i don't know i like to like really scrub and Mm -hmm. you know so and it wears them down and then they have that softness like the nice ones huh yeah gotcha um just two more questions here. If you could choose one piece of art for every person on oh, earth yeah, yeah, yeah. to spend an hour with in a room, uh, what would you choose? So I would choose one of Monet's uh, water lilies mm. because you can see them up close and they're very abstract. And then if you mm-hmm. go farther back, then they become the water lilies. And then you can, if you spend a lot of time with them, there's different colors that you see and then you're like um, different light and flickering and just the beauty of it. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. what I would going someone in that room. <laughs> going in line with your emphasis of wanting to spread beauty into the yeah, world. It's just yeah. the most beautiful painting um, to you. Wow. Yeah. Have you seen them in person? Yeah. So there was a show at the De Young of uh, a lot of different ones that I hadn't seen before at the mm-hmm. Water Lilies and then long, thin ones. Right. And it was just so beautiful to like see them up close and then go in a distant gallery and look at them mm-hmm. and how different they looked. Mm. Mm-hmm. And also, like, the the room, I guess it's at MoMA that has the water lilies. The one in San Francisco? No, in um, New York. Oh, okay. I think that's the museum. Where that houses it yeah. most of the time? Yeah. Hmm. It's just, like, a round room. And right, it's like yeah. The whole... That's an interesting factor. I wonder if he considered that the distance from which the viewer sees the work. Do you think? I do, yeah. 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 
Is that something that most painters consider? Yeah, and that's why like you have enough space to get back and look at it from this angle. And I like to look at from all angles so that I know that it looks okay. Like if you're walking up to the painting from this side, that it doesn't look weird. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that it works from wherever you're looking at it. Yeah. If, if, okay, so the final question is a bit of a hypothetical, and it's, it has to do with, uh, you know, 100 years from now, you know, you and I are dead, and it's <laughs> like, there is a, a mom, and she's teaching her young daughter about art in an art book, and your name, Victoria Vidal, comes up with some of your art. What would make you uh, most satisfied, most happy? To, to have as like a, a brief you know description of like your legacy in art um like different museum shows or being parts of different museum collections and that's why I'm in this book and then my technique um the layering technique and like capturing this beauty that probably doesn't exist anymore in a hundred years. Mm -hmm. So it could be like a snapshot of the time that we're living in. Mm -hmm. And they can look back and say, oh, there was beauty here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Great. Well, uh, that's all the questions I have. And... Yeah, thank you again for, for taking the time for the show. Thank you. Really thanks appreciate for coming. It. Yeah, th yeah thanks fun. for inviting me into your space. It's nice to like talk about different things and think about my work in different ways. Yeah. That yeah. good. I hope I was able to stretch your, you yes. know, think about it more with, <laughs> with language yes. rather than the, exactly. your work and stuff. Uh, so for those who are interested in, in connecting with you, I, I know you have a... Uh, an email list, the Studio Insight Insider email list that people can sign up for on your website. Yes. And that's vdell.com, V E E D E L L.com. Yes. Um, anywhere else um, in particular? Instagram, Victoria Instagram. underscore Vidal. Gotcha. That's my handle. Cool. And Arena Galleries yes. is, your, is yeah. your current representation. Yeah, so they have uh, like five locations in Northern California. Cool. All right. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs>